The internet has been an incredible engine of innovation, creativity, and economic growth. A key reason why is that internet intermediaries, service providers, and web platforms are not held liable for the content generated by their users. Sites like YouTube and Facebook give users the freedom to upload and share a wide variety of content, and copyright holders have the opportunity to flag content for review and possible removal. New legislation would block U.S. users from entire websites merely accused of enabling piracy. The simplest problem with the approach embedded in legislation like SOPA and Protect IP is that it's a form of censorship without due process. Even when these sites are located overseas, the free speech rights of Americans are implicated. First, because we may have a right to speak on online forums and chat boards that are hosted overseas, some of which may include legitimate speech side by side with links to infringing content. But it's also because the First Amendment, as the Supreme Court has long held, includes the right to receive information and ideas. Sometimes the right to free speech can be limited. We have mechanisms in the United States for taking down targeted uh, cases of infringing content. But what we don't do in our constitutional tradition is engage in prior restraint. That is to say, blocking something as broad as an entire web domain without an adversarial legal proceeding before a site can be blocked or taken down or otherwise silenced. It's a pattern we've seen again and again. In the early 80s, when the first video cassette recorders came out, the movie industry tried to kill the technology because they saw it as a tool for piracy. When the first MP3 players came out in the 1990s, the music industry tried to kill the technology as a tool for piracy. YouTube is still embroiled in lawsuits with companies that see it as too much of a tool for piracy. The instinct of the industry is always to kill innovation that disrupts their business models or threatens the way they're used to doing things. Under a regime that makes it this easy to take down an entire website, you know, there's a real risk that the next Facebook, the next YouTube, gets shut down before it even really gets started. Piracy is a real problem with real costs. And if internet censorship could solve the issue, policymakers would be obligated to weigh the costs against the benefits. The problem is that we know it's not really going to stop piracy. Anyone with a tiny bit of technological sophistication can change a couple browser settings or download a plugin that allow them to circumvent these blocks easily. In fact, the U.S. State Department has been a big promoter of some of the very tools that can be used to do this kind of circumvention. Uh, we've recommended them as a means to get around the firewalls in oppressive regimes like China or Iran, but they can be used just as easily to get around copyright filters. The United States needs to be able to send a clear message to the world that we support the principle of a free, unified, open internet where no government firewalls decide which websites the citizenry is allowed to access. If we get rid of that principle, then the only difference between the United States and China is what's on the blacklist.